In this lesson, I'd like to discuss the nerves of the cervical plexus. And there's just a few little anatomical, subtle nuances that we need to discuss before moving on. Um, and just so you guys are aware, all these little squares represent individual vertebrae. Uh, because uh, the spinal cord is in here, and it gives off individual nerve roots. And the nerve roots are in between here, already numbered for you. And I have also numbered the vertebrae in which uh, are here. So uh, the, uh, the stuff that's in the square is the vertebrae, and the nerve root is the number in between them. So there are... In the brachial plexus, C1, C2, C3, C4, and a contribution from C5 nerve roots. And when we discuss these, the nerve roots in the cervical plexus are named from the vertebrae they are above. So the vertebrae below the nerve roots where we name them. And this is when we get into the curious case of having a C8 nerve root and only seven cervical vertebrae. There's always got to be an odd man out. Because with the brachial plexus, you name the nerves of the brachial plexus based on the nerve, uh, based on the vertebrae above them, above the nerve root. So we are ready to go to look at these. And so here we have the nerve roots numbered. And from each nerve root, I'm going to draw out the ventral rami. And if you remember from class that it is the brachial plexus is derived from the vent ventral rami. Uh, their perspective, uh, other perspective uh, uh, contributions so of the particular uh, rami of that nerve coming off that spinal root. Now, these are the rami that we are concerning ourselves with, and we have it a few subtle things, and I'm just going to draw the cords coming off of this plexus for the first three. And then coming from the last one, C5, I'm going to extend him a little bit. And I want to start off with one coming from here, looping and coming back up. And this would be the Anza cervicalis. Anza meaning handle. Uh, so we got the Anza cervicalis. Coming here uh, between there off of, and so you can see that it's uh, formed... Uh, actually by C1, C2, C3 nerve roots all give a contribution to this entire nerve. Uh, so a wide variety of contributions coming out here. Now, once we do have that guy, I'm going to draw another one coming upwards. And this one is the great auricular. Great auricular nerve. The great auricular nerve comes up that way. Here, moving downwards a little bit, we have the transverse cervical. And this is why you can see the transverse cervical and the great auricular in this nice little pattern there, right around the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The great auricular will go on your models, you'll find it just behind the ear. Uh, then coming from the unison of C3, C4, uh, off the tip of its particular rami and coming off of the uh, plexus, we will see a nerve. I'm going to use purple to draw him, and we'll come across here. And this is the supra clavicular nerves, clavicular nerves, supraclavicular. And then in orange, we have a nerve that has contributions from uh, the C3, C4, and C5. C3, C4, and C5 will keep the phrenic alive. The phrenic nerve goes to innervate the diaphragm, so it comes off C3, C4, C5 nerve roots, and so these are the nerves that all give contributions to this, and this is why we say C5 here does give a contribution to the cer uh, cervical plexus, and then this will come out from the scaling muscles and go to the diaphragm to innervate the diaphragm um, in the systemic uh, uh, in a systemic innervation. But this concludes my video on the nerves of the cervical plexus. Thank you.